Hey there. Um, today I'm going to be working on some watercolor papers that I'm going to eventually use to make an art journal. I've been doing these in between projects um, because I'm not good at just sitting still and I love to listen to my books on my um, Audible account. I have them on the loudspeaker. That's why I never have the volume on my videos when I make them because I'm usually listening to a book and humming to myself. I don't know if you do that, but it kind of soothes me to hum. So anyhow, right here you'll see I'm using some Brie Reese um, liquid watercolors and I also am going to use some of the Lindy's uh, Stamp Gang sprays. Now I don't spray them, I just dip my mop brush. This is a uh, a small, I think this is a size 10 point um, mop brush. It's a watercolor mop brush and I love using them because you can load them with a bunch of water and just keep going. Now before I start working on the watercolor paper, I do spritz it with a uh, water spray um, a spray bottle sorry and that way it makes the watercolor immediately react once it touches the paper you'll get it to bleed out into little little veins and also I'll tilt it you'll see to get drips um, I'll also spl uh, splatter the water because I like to get it to look different so anyhow I'm gonna continue on with this and I'm gonna make all the watercolor backgrounds and then I'll be back to tell you what I'm gonna do next I really hope you enjoy this because this is like something that's super easy to do and the process as you go just gets better and better. These papers, once I'm done, um, they look like little mini artworks, but then I'm going to fold them and create a journal. All right, so I will see you in a little bit.
Okay, I finished my papers and here you're gonna see I have some art foamies. Um, these art foamies that I'm using were designed by Rebecca Meyer and she graciously sent me um, a few of them. I think she sent me like six or seven of them. And I'm telling you, I never used them. And I'm, I will be honest, I didn't know how to use them. I was trying to uh, put paint on them different ways, but I found the easiest way for me is to take my jelly plate and put it beside it, put the paint on there because you can put the paint in a solid color or you can do gradual paints um, like a color variation so you could have the yellow the orange the red and then you can just kind of swirl your uh, foamy in there and then press it on and it goes just like it does if you're making papers on your gel plate but I'm telling you the look of the uh, the foamies on paper is amazing especially over the watercolor I'm just using different acrylic paints and I'm stamping them like you would a rubber stamp but I don't want it to look perfect I always get variations and ghosting in it and I'm going to continue this on all of them um, there you just saw the little plate I'm using and I mixed colors with the blue and the white and gold I like to get some metallics in there because I love the little sparkle in the paper when I go also don't forget to turn your stamps when you do this because you don't want everything to look lined up and symmetrical I like to make it look varying and stamp little bits of the stamp in there not to have it where you have just everything stamped perfect because the imperfections are what make each piece unique um, and try to just move around too quickly that you're not overthinking it because at this point it's supposed to be intuitive and fun and not be overthought okay so at the end of this when I finished doing all my stamping you'll see that I took the residual paint that was on the jelly plate and I will go ahead and press that down on the last piece of paper um, that way I didn't waste any bit of paint at all there you go see boom <laughs> okay so now that I got all the papers done I'm gonna put up the the uh, art foamies and I'm now gonna take some of my rubber stamps now these are the rubber stamps that were designed some of them by Carabelle some of them are by Rebecca Meyer um, and I'm telling you I like to use them with the uh, distress oxides by Ranger these distress oxides I like to use these bright colors now they maybe don't show up so well right now but what I do is I stamp them all over and then when I'm done I'm gonna spritz them with water and there's something about the distress oxides once they activate with water they'll start to bleed a little bit or vein out a little bit and the colors become so much more vibrant so when you use them don't forget to put them the wet them with the water because it's something about that activation that makes these such a unique tool and I think this is what makes everybody really like them because they have a longer workability than regular um, ink and the way that they react to the water is just amazing so go ahead and watch this as I continue on I'm just gonna keep randomly random stamping uh, things all over these papers and then when I'm done I'll come back all right sorry about my voice it's allergy season and I feel like I'm choking all the time I'm sure you guys can all appreciate that again I'll be back in a minute
okay so now I'm spritzing the um, stamps with the water and you see how you already begin to see the colors bleed out in the back but they still keep the stamped image on there I mean it just it's amazing how much more vibrant they get when they get wet I just <clears throat> I have to say that's one of my favorite things. I mean, if you don't like this and you don't have these, you can always stamp with just regular ink. Everybody's got their archival black ink. Uh, just go ahead and work with it and have some fun and come up with your own designs, okay? So now that this part is done, I'm gonna wait for them to dry. Now I have some other ones that are just the uh, watercolor backgrounds here. These are the ones I painted earlier, they're dry now. And here I'm showing you some that I worked previously. Now those are covered with stencils. Here's some of my doodles and dots and just mark making. Um, I like to do this. This is how I sit in the house and relax. I just listen to books or watch TV and I work on my doodling all the time. These are fun ways to do it. And don't worry about which way you do it. When you fold the page, that's the fun because some of them are gonna look sideways, some of them are gonna go up and down. Um, I kind of look at where it's at and I kind of take the sheet and I figure, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start something here. Now on this one, I'm gonna start a Mandela. These uh, little plastic uh, circles that I'm using, these are actually rulers that are for a quilt. Uh, patchwork quilt making. They're a little circle kit. They come with five different size circles and they were like $30. They weren't cheap. I got them in a quilt store a long time ago and I have to say they're like one of my favorite things to have. Um, I love circles of course like anybody else but I like to use them to make circles on my artwork because you have a firm edge to work in. A lot of times you have the rulers that have the circle cut out and you're working around that by pressing onto the little plastic edge. This gives you something for working with paint markers. Now I'm working on a mandela flower here, or just a mandela, and this is how I make them. I always do them freehand. I don't really plan them. I don't draw them in pencil. I always just go for it. And don't be afraid to do this because there's really no right or wrong way. And eventually with practice, you'll begin to be able to size your leaves. And if you notice, if you, if you could see the full circle of this, the trick to it is when you get close to the end, go to the other side and kind of figure out the distance between the last two so you know how to fit that last petal in without running out of space. But anyhow, go ahead and enjoy. I'm only gonna show you a bit of how I do the doodles and then I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next step, okay? Enjoy, you guys.
Okay, here's my finished sheets here. Um, I went ahead and quickly doodled on these. Oh, look at the bright colors in that. And here are the pages that I stamped earlier. They're now dry. Um, you can see the Distress Oxides and the Art Foamies. Here's a couple other sheets that I had just finished and had sitting around. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and take my bone folder and I'm going to crease them down the middle and fold them in half. Um, I use the bone folder on it because this is heavy watercolor paper and just folding it with my hands doesn't really do a good job. If you don't have one of these bone folders, use the handle of your scissors or the uh, dull side of the scissors. Don't use the sharp side, of course. And after I'm done folding them, I'm going to take some large clips. I use four of them, two on each side, and I'm going to go ahead and cr uh, clamp them all together and let them sit. Eventually, it'll make them lay flat so that I can work on them. Uh, like I said, these are going to be a journal and I'm gonna clamp them together with other pages that I've done. I've done quite a few. And after this video, I'll go ahead and do the next part of my art journal, and we'll go ahead and decorate these some more. So I will see you soon. I hope you have a great week, and look forward to talking to you with the next one. Bye.